أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض صدق الله العظيم I recited some part of Ayatul Kursi which is also known as verse of throne this verse is a special because this is a verse in the Holy Quran which talks about nothing but oneness and unity of Allah the first phrase of this ayah Allahu la ilaha illahu Allah there is no God but he is a claim from God that I am the one and only God only I deserve to be worshipped and in the remaining part of the ayah Allah has given us the arguments on it that why I am claiming that I am the one and only God Allah has given so many different arguments in a very logical way to prove that he is really the one and only God Allah has mentioned such unique attributes in this ayah which are not present in any other being other than Allah and these attributes make him the one and only First of all Allah said al hay the word hay is derived from the word hayat hayat means life Life is present in all other living beings, but our life is too short. We were not there a few years back and we will not be there in after a few years. But the life of Allah is infinite. There is no beginning of Allah's life and there is no end of his life. That's why he is eternal. He is ever living. The Holy Quran also says in Surah Hadid, "Huwa al-awwalu wal-akhiru wal-zahiru wal-batin." He is the first and the last and the manifest and the hidden. Similarly in Surah Tur-Rahman Allah said kullu man alayha fan wa yabqa wajhu rabbika dhul jalali wal ikram everything on this earth is funny and except the face of your lord he will be there forever so Allah is unique because he is an ever living being after that Allah said al-qayyum that Allah is also self subsisting Allah is also the sustainer and maintainer of the entire universe We can describe this phrase al-qayyum in many ways like Allah is the only one who is providing all the necessities of life to his creations and he is maintaining the life of all living beings. We cannot even count the number of living beings on this planet and in this universe, but Allah knows all of them. Allah is providing their needs wherever they are, so he is qayyum of all creations. We can also describe and uh, explain this word al-qayyum in the way that Allah is maintaining the system of this universe. We see that there is no change in the rotation and the revolution of the earth. Nothing is coming in the space to hit the planet of earth. Everything is going on smoothly. So who is maintaining it? None other than Allah. He is al-qayyum. And when we think about this quality of Allah a question comes in our mind that if Allah is doing so many jobs alone and he is maintaining the entire universe so Allah should get tired he should need some rest as well as it happens with the human beings that when we do so many things we get tired and we feel fatigue and we need rest but Allah says la ta'khudhuhu sinatun wa la nawm that Allah is free from humanly weaknesses though he is maintaining the entire universe but even then he needs no rest neither slumber seizes him nor the sleep so allah is beyond our imagination allah is free from these kind of needs allah is free from all these kinds of weaknesses if he will have any weakness in him so obviously he cannot become god then allah also mentioned another unique quality saying ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum that he knows what is in front of them and what is behind them what is front of us is the future and what is behind us is the past so allah is saying that he is all knowing nothing remains hidden from allah he knows the future of mankind and he also knows the past of mankind basically past present and future are for us for allah there is no time what happened millions of years ago it is in front of allah today and what will happen after millions of years it is also in front of allah right now so he, everything is present for him and nothing remains out of allah's knowledge there are many verses in the holy quran you recite which end on wallahu bi kulli shay'in alim that allah knows everything and there are verses 
in which Allah said, Inna Allah alimun bizaati sudur, that Allah even knows what is going on in your heart. So even the thoughts which come in our mind, in our heart, Allah knows them as well. So it is the infinite knowledge of Allah. Another unique attribute of Allah is mentioned in this ayah that man zalladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi'ithni who can intercede in his presence except by his will. Allah is talking about the judgment day that on the judgment day Allah will be the only authority and no one will be able to say anything without the permission of Allah. Even the messengers of Allah will say when Allah will grant them the permission. So it tells us about the authority of Allah on the judgment day. Like Surah Fatiha also says, Maliki Yawmiddin, Master of the Judgment Day. But one of the very unique word of this ayah is Kursi. The word Kursi literally means chair, but over here the word Kursi refers to throne and power and authority. Allah is saying, Wasi'a Kursi yuhus samawati wal earth. The throne of Allah extends over the heavens and the earth, which means that nothing can happen in the heavens without the permission of Allah. Nothing can happen on earth without the permission of Allah. Even a leaf cannot fall down from the branch of the tree if Allah has not planned it, if Allah doesn't know this. So Allah is in full control of everything. This is the unique quality of Allah and no one can challenge Allah's authority. So these attributes prove that Allah is the only one who deserves to be worshipped and Allah has no partner or sharer. Allah is beyond human imagination and comprehension. There are many things which Muslims can learn from this uh, ayah today. First of all, Muslims learn that Allah is laying emphasis in the entire ayah to believe in Tawheed. So Muslims must avoid all forms of shirk and they should worship one and only God. All sins are forgiven but accept the sin of shirk. So when Allah lays emphasis a lot on Tawheed in the Holy Quran and you know almost one third of the Quran lays emphasis on Tawheed so at the same time the Holy Quran is rejecting all the forms of shirk we must avoid them. After that, when Allah said Al-Qayyum, He is maintaining the entire universe, it means that whenever we need something, we should turn to Allah and we should seek His support. Because when Allah is managing the entire universe, so obviously He has the powers to fulfill our small needs. No one else can fulfill our needs better than Allah. And when we learned from this ayah that Allah knows everything, so it develops piety in us. It develops the fear of Allah in our heart. It makes us God conscious that wherever we are, Allah is with us. In Surah Hadith, Allah said, وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ He is with you whenever you are. So a believer should always remember that he cannot hide anything from Allah. Even if we are alone in our room, so we should remain obedient to God and avoid all sinful things when there is no one to check us, keeping in mind that Allah is watching us and we have to stand in front of Allah on the judgment day. After that, when we learn that Allah is going to make us stand in front of Him and He will judge us according to our deeds and nothing else will be helpful for us on the judgment day. No wealth, no relationship, no friendship, only the deeds will be helping us on that day. So we should prepare for Akhirah and we should do maximum good deeds and avoid all sinful activities. And the verse also tells us that Shafaat will take place and Allah will give permission on that day to His beloved servants to do the Shafaat. Like the Holy Prophet peace be upon him said, a Hafiz will be allowed to take 10 people with him to Jannah and a Shaheed will be allowed to take 70 people with him to Jannah and according to the ranks Allah will be giving the permission to the people this is mentioned over here illa bi izni that shafaat will take place but with the permission of Allah and the verse also develops the confidence in us it also makes us fearless because when Allah is saying that everything is in the control of Allah and nothing can happen in this universe without the planning of Allah, so it means that we should not be afraid of anyone. Only that will happen what Allah has planned, what Allah has decided. So we should put our trust in Allah and we should have only the fear of God in our heart and we should not be afraid of anyone. 
no one can harm you if Allah has not planned it. And if Allah has decided something for you, so no one can save you from that. So our trust should be only in God and not in other people. This verse is a very important verse which teaches us Tawheed. We should understand it and implement the teachings in our life to become a better Muslim. Muslims also recite this surah in order to protect themselves from various evils. So that is also a use of Ayat al-Kursi in a daily Muslim living. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.